In this video, we're going to learn how to put text behind a moving object or a moving person or a moving something. If this is the first time that we meet, my name is Lila. So lovely to meet you on this channel. It is all about a video. So if you want to make better videos and I'm pretty sure that you do, then make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out. Now, like I said, in this video, we're going to place something that could be text, that could be a logo. It can be anything behind a moving person or object. In this case, I'm going to use myself as an example. So let's open up Premiere Pro and let's start with the first step. The first thing that we want to do is we want to drag and drop the clip on the timeline and then find a clear frame. And now it is already time to add our text. And the easiest way to add text is by hitting T on your keyboard and then clicking on the screen right here. Now let's type our text. Now we need to double click on it in order to select all of the text. And then we go to effect controls right here. And then right here under text, we can change the font. We can change the size. This is the time to stylize your text. Now that we're done stylizing our text, it is time to close that menu and go down here to opacity. And as you can see, there are three options. There is a circle, a square and a pen tool. Now these are all different ways to create a mask, but in our case, we want the complete freedom. So what we're going to do is we are going to select the pen tool and then we're just going to start drawing a mask around ourselves. Now here are a few tips if you're creating your mask. If you want to create a curve, what you can do is just create a new point and then hold it. And then as you can see, as you move it around, you will create a curve. If you have created your mask and you want to delete a point, all you have to do is hit control or command on your keyboard and click on that point. And if you want to add another point to your mask, then just click on the line somewhere where you want the point to be and voila. Okay. So now that we have our mask ready, what we want to do is we want to go into the values and we want to change the settings a little bit. In order to get the text outside of the mask, we need to go here and we need to click on inverted. Now, the one thing that I always change is the mask feather. The mask feather is basically how soft you want the edges of your mask to be. And I don't want it to be too soft because then you're going to see that you used a mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with the settings a little bit. 10 is usually the default setting and is usually fine, but just play around with it to make it look really good. All right, now that our mask looks really good, we need to animate it because right now we have created a mask for this particular frame. But if we play through the video, you can see that the mask doesn't move and we want it to move. So what we're going to do is we are going to click on this little stopwatch in front of mask path. But before we do this, I quickly want to explain to you what keyframes are because I've had this question a few times. I think it's important that we all know what we're doing. So let me quickly explain what it is. Keyframes allow you to animate an effect inside Premiere Pro. Okay, cool. But what does that mean? Well, what that means is if we're taking this as an example, the position of the mask, if we don't create any keyframes, it will remain constant throughout the entire clip. It will just stay where we created it, but that is not what we want. We want to animate the mask because we want to change the position. We want it to follow our movement or the movement of the object in the video. So in order to do that, we need to create some points and all of these points have different values. So we have a start point and we have an end point. So we have a start point and we have an end point, but in this case, we're going to create a bunch of keyframes. So basically we'll have a little checkpoints on that row to make sure that our mask moves appropriately. We have just enabled the little stopwatch in front of mask path. And as you can see right here, this is the keyframe that I was talking about. So what we're going to do now is we're going to skip a few frames forward. I usually move like three to five frames forward, kind of depends on the speed of in this case me. And then I'm going to create a new keyframe by moving the mask. So it covers me again. And as you can see, another keyframe has been created. Now there is another faster way that does not require any manual keyframing. And that is if you click right here on this play button that says, track selected mask forward. Now, if you click on that Premiere Pro will track it for you automatically. The reason why I like to do it manually and why I'm showing you how to do it manually is because then you understand the keyframes that we've made. You understand what's going on instead of just automatically tracking something and then have no idea how to adjust something. And also I like to have full control over this tracking. So that is why I do it manually. Now that we've created our first keyframes, let's just play through it and see how it looks. 
Now, if you see that it isn't tracking properly and the same goes for if you're doing it automatically and you see that it didn't track properly, just go back to that keyframe and then change the position of the mask. Now, if you paid attention and maybe you've already noticed it, the beginning of the video is not animated yet. And the reason is that we picked a clear frame. We didn't start at the beginning of the video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the first keyframe and then we're going to move backwards. And again, if you want to do this automatically, then click on this button right here that says track selected mask backward and Premiere Pro will do the work for you. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you put text behind a moving something. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And of course, watch this video if you want to learn another cool effect. I highly recommend it. And I don't just say that because it's my video. Or maybe I do.